Let's now move on to a new case study for our learning of specification and also refinements of systems. And specifically, we're going to consider a system from a different application domain, which is a simple file transfer protocol or FTP for short. As usual, let's go over the learning outcomes for the lecture. And notice that I use the term review, meaning that all the items I listed over here has uh, they have been seen already in the earlier case study for the bridge controller, but it's they're going to be used in a different uh, context or application domain. So it's definitely uh, designed to really strengthen your understanding about, about the various items, as we'll see. And first one, we want to review what a requirements document is, especially uh, remember a requirement document can contain in description and art description. But for the case study of the FTP, we only got art description, as we'll see. And what a, re, uh, what a refinement is, in order to introduce a refinement, remember you can either use uh, variable replacement or variable superposition. That's uh, the terms we actually introdu uh, introduced to you in the earlier case study. And also, once you introduce the uh, refinements, in order to prove that it is valid, what kind of proof obligations do you have to formulate? And also, once you formulate the proof obligation and sequence, how can you discharge them using the inference rules? So these are the important principles that wouldn't change in the new case study. And also we need to know how to write formal specification. For the FTP case study, we are not uh, restricted, uh, restricting ourselves to just uh, simple variable types like integers or Boolean. Instead, we're going to make use of the predicates and sets relations and functions language that we actually review in week number one and two lecture lecture number one specifically. So you will be expected to actually review the relevant concept as we talk about them. We wouldn't actually do the review in this lecture itself. And as usual, we got uh, two parts for the specification. Static part for the context, dynamic part for the machines. So all the concept like a constant, axiom, theorems, variables, invariants, events, guards, and also action. All these have been introduced to you already in an earlier case study. But for this, we're also going to use them. So hopefully that will reinforce your understanding. And of course, proof obligation will be very important, especially you want to know how to formulate and prove. Proof obligations related to refinements, we got many. For example, guard strengthening, and also invariant preservation, and relative deadlock freedom, and etc. And also we got system properties. Specifically, we want to prove that our system can really establish and preserve the invariance. And also it can really maintain uh, data freedom or relative data freedom to be more precise. And also it should be divergence free or lifelock free. So these are what we uh, introduced to you earlier. Don't forget about them. Finally, we're going to apply inference rules of the sequence calculus to discharge the proof obligations because each one of them is formulated as a sequence. And since we are using uh, the extended language of the uh, predicates and also sets relations and functions, so we will need uh, new inference rules for, uh, for us to discharge the uh, proof obligation. That's something I will introduce to you as we go, as needed, just in time. To start with our discussion, I would like to clarify about the different application domains that you will have to deal with after completing this lecture. And of course, the first application domain we did was the reactive system, and we used the bridge controller case study. And we did a specification, we did a refinement, and also we did the proofs for that case study. And we're going to do something very similar in a new case study, but in a different domain. I'll get to there in a moment. And the very important characteristic of a reactive system is it works with the physical world and a very specialized uh, category of the reactive system is called so-called a cyber physical system in which you have to deal with the dynamics of the physical world but it's kind of beyond the scope of this course and let's now recall what really uh, are the important components of a reactive system for our bridge controller we definitely need sensors to really uh, record the measures from observing the physical world and do you remember what sensors we actually uh, impose on our system for the bridge controller? Well, we definitely have to record the number of the cars as the traffic on the bridge both ways. And also we have to record how many cars are actually on the island. So we actually got the A, B, and C variables, right? And what else? Also, let's say if the traffic lights on the mainland side has turned green, we also have to record whether this 
has been any car passed after the traffic light has turned green. Symmetrically, we have to do the similar measure for the island traffic light as well. And these two measures are very important for us to regulate the traffic so that we don't have any divergence, so that we don't have any life lock, right? So these are the important details you want to review when you study uh, the uh, FTP uh, protocol as well, because they are kind of uh, uh, important uh, details for you to actually analyze. Right, so I'm just talking about A, B, and C, and also ML pass and IL pass over here. What about the other parts? Well, if you got sensors to really record the measures from the from observing the physical world, you have to make some control so that agents involved in the bridge controller they can actually be controlled by the actuators. So actuators. So what kind of actuators do we have for the bridge controller? Well, the only me mechanism for us to really control the cars, of course, cars are the main agents for our bridge controller system. But to really control the cars, we make the assumption that actually one of the E description is about the uh, drivers, they will obey the traffic lights. So traffic lights are really our actuators. They should really turn green and, or red when it is safe to do so. So, so these are the two. Uh, variables we introduce in uh, some refinements, MLTL, the traffic light on the mailing side, ILTL, the traffic light on, some, uh, on the island side. Right, so these are very quick summary about what the application domain of the reactive, uh, reactive system is like, especially for our bridge controller. For our new case study, we're going to consider a new application domain called distributed program. Let's see the characteristic of that. It's uh, mainly a protocol, like a rules to be followed by two agents in the distributed program. Uh, that's kind of the restricted uh, constraint, of course. You know, if you uh, if you want to generalize it into multiple agents, that's also possible. But again, that's the beyond the scope for this case study. But let's only consider two agents, namely sender and also receiver. And the sender and receiver, they will reside on distinct uh, ge uh, geographical locations. So since they actually sit in different places, we cannot really uh, expect the transmission of the file to be simultaneous. It has to be done item by item or piece by piece, asynchronously, to be more formal. We'll see. And also, it should be uh, on a computer network, so they, be, they can be connected. However, uh, again, this is even though it's beyond the scope for this case study, but when we say it's actually be uh, on a computer network for the transmission, data may be lost. That's a very realistic scenario, in which case uh, the, pack, the data packets or maybe the items of the file may have to be, uh, may have to be reset. However, uh, about resending the files when they actually get lost over the network is beyond the scope for this uh, for this case study. For this case study, we kind of assume that it's kind of perfect whenever we want to trans uh, transmit a part of the file. But if, you are, if you're interested, you can definitely go back to the textbook and go on to the subsequent chapter for the chapter number four. I think it's chapter number five about bounded transmission protocol. That's something you can refer to. And each file is transmitted asynchronously. So asynchronously simply means all the, uh, the entire file cannot be transmitted at one go. It has to be done gradually in different phases. So bytes of the file do not arrive in the, at the receiver all at one go. That's basically summarized what I just said. And we are going to need the language of predicates, sets, relations, and functions that we review in the math uh, lecture, in uh, lecture number one. So that, that's really something I would expect you to review yourself. We already covered that very thoroughly uh, in the beginning of the semester. Now is the time to really use it for system specification and refinements. And the same principles of generating proof obligations for the system properties and also refinement will actually apply. So I'm gonna uh, maybe just uh, recall the rule together with you about how to generate a sequence, but we're also going to do some exercises together. I'll do some with you together, but the remaining ones will be up to you uh, to really complete on your own beyond the lecture. All right, so this diagram here summarizes about the modeling situation we are faced with. In the computer network, we got two agents to focus on. We got a sender on the left, and we got a receiver on the right. And the sender is trying to send a file gradually, piece by piece, over the network to the receiver. You can think about the individual items over here, maybe are simply the different bytes of the same file. We're kind of uh, considering some simplified scenario rather than sending multiple files, we are sending only a single file, but piece by piece, gradually. 
and you can see the arrows over here are the communication direction. You can see the communication between the sender and the receiver is really bidirectional, meaning that the sender may have to initiate some communication with the receiver, maybe just by sending the different pieces of the file, but the receiver, as they actually uh, receiving the uh, different pieces of the file from the sender, they have to send an acknowledgement back to the sender. That's something we'll see in the subsequent refinements later. But I will summarize about the refinement strategy uh, together with you, uh, even before we get started with the initial model. Right, so that's a diagram what to keep in mind, very simple mechanism. However, you might be wondering, to be realistic, shouldn't we actually got multiple senders and multiple receivers in a network? You're actually quite right about it, but for the purpose of the, the illustration for this case study, we only consider the simplified scenario for sender and also receiver. As I said before, even uh, realistic, uh, even uh, to be even more realistic, sometimes when you actually try to transmit files, items into over the network, the items might just get lost. In which case, you may have to request for the resend, uh, for the resend from the sender. But we are not really considering such uh, fault tolerance or fault handling. That's something you can definitely refer to chapter number five if you want to uh, see how it can be specified and refined and improved. Or you can just maybe do some exercise on your own, uh, maybe beyond this course if you're interested. And let's now talk about the requirements documents for the case study. So remember, we talked about the art description earlier. Art description, each one of them should be simple and also should be simple enough so you don't really uh, contain compound items in the art description so it should be atomic specification of some intended functionality or desired property of the working system right it's a the definition you want to remember let's take a look at the art description as i said before for the distributed programs or ftp example unlike the case for the uh uh a reactive system for the bridge controller since we don't really have to deal with the physical world in some way at least in this simple setting so that's why we don't have any e description but in general you might have to impose some environmental constraint if needed but for now let's focus on only three r description number one the protocol ensures the copy of a file we're only considering just a single file not multiple files from the sender to the receiver. So this really specifies about the two agents, sender and the receiver. Requirement number two, the file is supposed to be made of a sequence of items. You can think about the items over here, could be maybe different data packets or maybe different bytes. So we don't really specify that at the requirements level. We delegate that to the implementer or the uh, modeler to actually decide what items here really mean. And the final requirement is the file is really sent piece by piece. It can be uh, packet by packets or bytes by bytes. Again, it's more like an implementation issue that we can deal with later between the two sides. And the two sides will just be the sender and receiver. And here, the two sides over here also imply the sender and receiver may simply reside uh, in different uh, in different ge uh, geographic locations. In which case, you have to make sure the way you send and the way you uh, acknowledge are really robust. That's something we'll see in some further refinements of the system. A very simple system here for the FTP. We only got three requirements and we're gonna see how exactly we can impose some very simple initial model with many details abstracted away. We only focus on some aspects and then we'll gradually refine the initial model into the ultimate protocol. So we are following very similar uh, strategy as we did for the reactive system, the bridge controller. Let's now take a look at the uh, refinement strategy before we introduce to you the initial model. So you want to recall the design strategy that will always be applicable to all the application domains that you may have to specify for your purpose. And it's going to be progressive refinements. We start with something very simple with many details abstracted away, but we may just want to refine it to be uh, further refinements as we go, right? It can be multiple refinements we have to introduce. Ultimately, we're going to have the initial model plus three refinements. The initial model is going to be that the a file is transmitted from the sender to the receiver. So we're only handling this part. More specifically, we don't really talk about the file may have to be sent piece by piece. We simply say 
In order for the file to go from the sender to the receiver, what should be the final outcome? We simply focus on that. I'll, I'll get to the detail when we get there. But it's only requirements number one that we actually want to focus on, not two and three. If you recall, requirements two and three are just about the file from the sender to the receiver should be transmitted piece by piece asynchronously. But that's not something we'll consider in the initial model. In the initial model, we simply say the file is transmitted almost simultaneously from the sender to the receiver. It's not realistic. However, it's actually good as an initial model to be abstract. We'll see the details. Right, so this, uh, let me see, uh, transmitted from sender to receiver synchronously, as I said, and uh, it's not really piece by piece, but the entire file is actually sent over the network and also instantaneously. That's kind of the abstraction we have for the initial model, which will make everything, the specification and the proofs quite straightforward to do, as we'll see. And the transmission process about asynchrony of the process is abstracted away, and that will be dealt with in the next refinements. Right, the first refinements, uh, we're going to focus more on requirements number two and number three, which is about the file being transmitted will be sent over the network piece by piece. Gradual process. It's done asynchronously. So up to now, you can see I'm using the terms about uh, synchronous and also asynchronous. You should really understand about the difference between these two uh, words over here. It will be very important for you to understand that otherwise you wouldn't understand about exactly the requirements we are trying to satisfy by each model. And this, uh, in this concrete model, we are still abstracting something away. Let's see what they are. There's no communication between the sender and receiver. We are simply assuming that whenever the sender sends something to the receiver, the receiver doesn't really need to acknowledge about what's being received so far. But of course, that's not realistic, but that's okay. Because even though it's the first, re uh, it's the refinements, but it's only the first refinements. To really elaborate on the communication, we can delay that, postpone that to the next refinement. That's what we'll see. But at least we wouldn't have the synchrony about the file transmission. We try to actually send, um, we'll try to send the, uh, the pieces of file uh, uh, you know, one by one, gradually. That's what we are trying to uh, elaborate on the first refinements. But regarding exchange of the messages and acknowledgement, they are abstracted away in the first refinement. So that's why when we get to the second refinements, we will try to actually elaborate on the communication mechanism. They will be elaborated. And we're still dealing with requirements number two and number three. I'll try to highlight more about exactly what the difference is between first refinements and also second refinements because it could be a little bit confusing as you can see because they're both trying to address requirements two and three, requirements two and three. But why do we need to have two separate refinements? Let me just uh, summarize very quickly for you. For for the first refinements, we're only dealing with the file being sent to this, uh, from the sender to the receiver piece by piece. However, we don't talk about how exactly the sender and re receiver communicate with each other. That's abstracted away in the first refinements. In the second refinements, not only that, the file will be transmitted gradually as we uh, have seen in the first refinements, but also we're gonna introduce a new way of communicating between the sender and the receiver. So that's the second refinements, all right? And the final third refinements, yet is still going to focus on uh, these two requirements. However, it's going to do some optimization. But we'll see exactly what the optimization is if we get there, right? And you want to recall the correct, uh, correct by construction, right? So you want to make sure for each model to its refinements, you want to make sure only a manageable amount of details are needed, making it feasible to really conduct the analysis and proofs. You want to make sure every time you introduce a new model or new refinements, the number of proof obligation that will be generated is really manageable. You don't really want to implement your system right away in a single model, in which case you will just get a giant number of proof obligation to really prove. Not only the number is actually large, but also the complexity of each proof obligation will be too difficult to really manage. If you recall back in the bridge controller example, even with that simple uh, system, the generated proof sequence sometimes can be very uh, tricky to actually get right. So that's why we really want to separate your system model into different phases, different refinements, right? That's kind of the insight and lesson we learned from the bridge uh, from the bridge controller case study. 
And final heads up before we uh, before we talk about the first initial model. We definitely will cover before the end of the semester this one for sure. We definitely cover that this week. And either this week or next week, we'll try to cover at least the first refinements, which will be very valuable about the transmission process being elaborated. And I'll try to see if I can also cover the second refinement as well. But if not, at least we have, we have learned about one single refinement and also review the the refinement process and also about the uh, how to use the predicate language to specify your system. But we'll try. We'll see what we can do.